one to ESPN College Football, presented by Tide from Austin, Texas, the crown jewel of the Texas Hill Country. DKR Texas Memorial Stadium, and folks, how cool is it now to be at Campbell Williams Field? Royalty abounds here in the 110th meeting all time between the Baylor Bears and the Texas Longhorns. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones. Chop it up one more time. Dusty Dvorak is back with me in the booth. Allison Williams down on the field. She'll be joining us in just a minute. Dusty, we've got a couple of teams here in Texas and Baylor playing with a very tenuous, perilous margin of error with their losses and where they stand. Three weeks into October, it's time for them to start balling. And coming into the year, they said Texas football team with Big 12 championship aspirations. Three really hard fought games to start Big 12 play and two back to back losses, a four overtime loss to their arch rival. The bye week came at a perfect time. They're fresh and they're ready to get back on the track for a Big 12 championship. And for Dave Aranda, what a disruptive start to his time at Baylor. Uh, it's been a crazy start to the season, but they are here today, first game in 21 days, and they look for a big win today to kickstart this Dave Aranda era there in Waco. Dave Aranda, former defensive coordinator at LSU a season ago. It has been a very interesting and intriguing beginning for him. His team, though, will take the opening kickoff. Texas winning, deferring to the second half. Keep an eye on this guy, folks. Number one, Treston Edner has already returned two kickoffs for touchdowns, and the Longhorns give him an opportunity. He's hit first to the 15 and brought down at about the 13-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10. Crawford making the tackle. Let's go downstairs to Allison. Jonesy, every team in the country has been impacted by COVID-19, but Baylor really has had things turned upside down, especially this month. On October 8th, they had to shut down all football operations as it was reported 28 players and 14 staff members tested positive. An additional 17 were out for contact tracing. It cost them the Oklahoma State game, which had to be rescheduled. They got back to work on Sunday, but keep in mind, not everybody could return. Even their starting left tackle, Casey Phillips, only had one and a half practices. Yeah, number 79, part of the strategy may be right there to get the ball out quickly out of the backfield to love it. And he'll pick up about three yards on the play. The offensive line, including number 79, Phillips, moves into the starting lineup. Dusty, it's going to be something to watch, right? Absolutely. It's one of the biggest keys of the game for Baylor. That front being able to do a good job against that big, talented Texas defensive line. And this is a, a group missing two starters. Zalen just documented right there, but also they haven't had the same five guys in back-to-back -back practices all season long for a position group that needs continuity. They have not been able to find that so far this season. So many teams around the country searching for continuity. Third down and six. Love it in the backfield behind starting quarterback Charlie Brewer. Making a homecoming to Austin, Texas. Love it motions out of the backfield. Downfield, the back shoulder fade. Caught and complete for a first down at about the 35-yard line. Man, what a catch by R.J. Snead. What's a great adjustment in the air, back shoulder throw, and when they need a catch, the most reliable receiver on this Baylor football team is R.J. Snead. Good pressure there from Joseph Osai, but an outstanding throw and catch from Charlie Brewer to Snead. His 12th reception of the season, first down and 10 on this, their opening series. From the 35, Brewer looks to his left and almost picked off at the 47-yard line by Chris Brown. 5'11 senior from Houston almost had one here. Yeah, Chris Brown, outstanding job with his eyes on the quarterback. He sloughs off the tight end, gets in the throwing lane, and almost comes down with a big opening possession interception. Brewer catches a break there. He's four, thrown four touchdowns against two interceptions so far this season. Baylor coming in at one and one on the jet sweep. This is Edner, and he gets out to about the 37-yard line. Charlie Brewer, the starting quarterback, as I mentioned, this is a homecoming for him. Went to Lake Travis High School nearby, about 23 miles from here in Austin, Texas. Going against another Austin native, Sam Ellinger, his counterpart. Third down and long, eight to go. Empty formation for the Bears. Five wideouts on this receiver. 
on this formation. Play clock down to five. Brewer over the middle behind his receiver caught by Holmes, but it's about two yards short. Maybe a yard short of the first down, and it looks like the offense is going to stay on the field here. Dave Aranda rolling the dice, it appears, on the opening possession. Wow. Do you like the call, Dusty? Big decision. I'm more of a conservative guy. I'd punt <laughs> this, but hey, no practice, no problem, says Dave Aranda. Haven't played in three weeks. Brewer out of the shotgun. Maybe they're just going to try and draw him off sides, and they're going to call a timeout. With the play clock down to one, Dave Aranda, the first-year head coach, said that he liked the vibe, the energy he was getting from his team during the shutdown and then the resumption of practice. Back after this. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. Objection! Overruled! And right now, earn 100,000 bonus miles when you spend $20,000 in your first year. I'll allow it. What's in your wallet? The Big 12 Conference on ESPN. Welcome back, everyone, to the city of Austin, Texas. As we take a look at today's Bear Paint game plan, Dusty. Yeah, the O-line's got to step up for Baylor and allow this running game to get going. And Charlie Brewer, we've talked about all the different mishmash guys have been in and out. And for Texas, get out of your own way. That's the quote that Sam Ellinger gave us just yesterday. A lot of costly mistakes in that matchup against Oklahoma a couple of weeks ago. Isaac Power back to punt for the Bears. They changed their minds. Deshaun Jamison back at his own 15-yard line calls for the fair catch for Texas. And that's where their starting quarterback, Sam Ellinger, the senior, will take the reins of this offense. Some 85 yards away, Ellinger, a 6'3 senior from Austin, Texas. At Westlake High School, folks, he broke the records of, get this, Drew Brees and Nick Foles, a couple of guys that know how to do it pretty well. He's the active leader in total yards, total touchdowns, and passing touchdowns. Already has thrown for over 1,200 yards this season. And those graphics don't illustrate his leadership and toughness and how clutch he's been for this football team early on in this season. First down and 10. Robinson in the backfield. They fake the handoff to him. And well read, brought down in the backfield. Uh, Sam Ellinger, career numbers, very impressive. His total offense, well over 10,000, passing yards over 10,000, 84 passing touchdowns, and responsible for 114 touchdowns in all. It was interesting, though, in listening to him, him yesterday, saying that the one thing he recalled was being knocked out of the game as a sophomore. He hasn't had, in his own words, great moments against Baylor. Looking for one this afternoon. Second down and 11. They run the ball over the right side of that offensive line. That's Robinson with the first carry of the ball game. Robinson picks up a few. It'll be third down quickly for the Longhorns. And Texas wants to establish the rushing game here today. It's a big point of emphasis from last week. Stopping the run and running the football, it's going to be tough sledding against this Baylor defense who has been fantastic so far this season in pretty much every facet of the game. Four receivers for the Longhorns. Watch two Terrell Bernard. He's the catalyst on that Baylor Bears defense. They bring a little bit of pressure. Ellinger scrambles out of the pocket and wisely throws it away. So that's a win on the first offensive possession of the game for the Baylor Bears. Good pressure by Petrie. And kind of what Ron Roberts told us yesterday, they're going to use Terrell Bernard, the outstanding linebacker, as a decoy. Mugged up there in the A-gap, showing blitz. They brought it off the side from their star position, Jalen Petrie, pressure coming. Ellinger had to get outside the pocket. A nice start for this Baylor defense with a quick three and out. Ryan Buczewski has had two punts blocked this year, so keep an eye on him. He gets this one off to the dangerous punt returner, Ebner. But he won't get a chance at it. It's out of bounds, and boy, Baylor is going to get fantastic 
starting field position here, Dusty, working with a short field. When we come back, a shank punt by Ryan Buchevsky of Texas. Pick it up like this. Whoa, it reads your fingerprint. Wait, really? That's so cool. <laughs> ESPN College Football is presented by Tide. If it's got to be a clean you can trust, it's got to be Tide Hygienic Clean. It's kind of like BFF Friends Reunion Day, the 1997. Cal Lutheran Kingsman D3 team out there in California. Tom Herman and Dave Aranda, both members of that team before Aranda had to quit because of shoulder issues. Aranda recalled yesterday to us going to girls basketball games where Tom Herman was the master of ceremonies on the mic. He was the PA address man and uh, Coach Aranda's now wife was a player on that team. And Coach Herman gave us a little taste of those hey. PA skills. Yeah, yeah. He's got some skills on it, the mic, it, man. His mic game is fire. It's impressive. <laughs> Wildcat. On first and ten, Brewer hands it off. And that play blown up. The ball came loose. Holmes had the handle on it and was brought down immediately. And he's going to lose about three or four yards on the play. Well, they go here with Tristan Ebner as the quarterback, little Wildcat. And as you can see, Gavin Holmes getting to the perimeter. It looked as if Charlie Brewer was faking a quarterback reverse, and he takes a shot, puts it on the ground, but it's Blake Bettier, the right tackle on the football to help alleviate a catastrophic turnover here early on. Ball back to the 40-yard line. Brewer surveys underneath. Incomplete hit immediately intended for Snead as we go down to Allison. Well, I love the picture that Tom Herman painted of how different he and Dave Aranda were at Cal Lutheran. He's just telling that stories about how he got tossed as a PA announcer at a baseball game. <laughs> Meanwhile, he says uh, Aranda was reading philosophy, doing yoga, and sipping chai tea, to which Aranda denied, laughed, and said, no, 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 it's straight black coffee for me. <laughs> yeah, Coach Aranda, though, a uh, fitness freak, though. Up at 4 a.m., a five-mile run, four-mile bike, and then some yoga work. This team looking at third and 14. Trying to center themselves. Brewer brought down at the 48-yard line, a sack by that defensive front. Ojimo with a sack on the play. Yeah, it's going to be Ojimo right here. He's going to take the guard and walk him right back, and then you're going to see Osai come inside, but it's just a straight bull rush. He rips off, Osai comes underneath, and nowhere for Charlie Brewer to go as he stumbles to the turf, and a big sack on third and long for this Texas defense. And back to the point we started from the top, this Baylor offensive line moving pieces around, guys in spots they're not quite accustomed to. Nice pressure and sack there to get off the field. Robinson back for this punt at his own eight-yard line. Fair catch called at the 15, which is about the same spot Texas started last drive. Prior to their three and out. This is the 110th chapter of this rivalry. Baylor and Texas, a couple of guys that grew up in Austin, playing here at DKM Stadium. Westlake and Lake Travis High Schools that far apart. DKR Stadium, the epicenter for these two players today. Brewer and Ellinger. They run it between the tackles. This is Robinson who's getting the early call here instead of uh, his counterpart, Ingram. Pardon me, his teammate Ingram. It'll be second down coming up. Hand it off again to Robinson. Touch and he's brought down short of the first down by a little bit, depending on the spot here. Third down and one. They're going quickly. Ellinger going to keep it himself. He's the team's leading rusher. And he shows you how he does it there, brought down by Bernard. 
Both these teams aren't going to huddle a whole lot today, are they, Dustin? No, they're going at warp speed here, and they're doing exactly what they talked about on this drive, coming out, running the football, establishing the line of scrimmage. A lot of motion and formation. They're going to run it with Ingram this time. Deontay Ingram. Brought down by Utley. Ingram was listed as the starter coming into the ball game, but Robinson getting the start instead. Second down and five. Ingram again, ball security tucked high and tight. Ball security has been an issue for him of late. Gain of a couple on the play. Third down coming up now for Texas. I like the mindset of going so fast. This is a Baylor team that conditioning in question, trying to wear him down here early. Ellinger, quarterback draw. He's not going to make it. Brought down short of the first down by T.J. Franklin, who was right there. It sets up a fourth down and about a long two or three to go, and in comes the punt unit. Really nice job by T.J. Franklin there. Works inside. Just a quarterback draw up the middle. Anytime you're in third and four or shorter, you have to be cognizant of the quarterback run game against Sam Ellinger. Nice job by the defensive end, getting good pushback, coming off inside, making the play to get their defense off the field. Buczewski shanked his first punt of the afternoon a moment ago. Let's see if he can do something better here. They don't come after him nearly as much. And he angles it out of bounds at about the 30-yard line in that area, which is where Brewer will take over first down and 10. The Bears coming back onto the field, 6.24 to go here in the first quarter. We made USAA insurance for this season. When being a fan on a budget gets tough, our agents do the legwork so saving on auto insurance is easy. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Each other going back to their high school days. In 2015, Brewers team got the best of Ellinger's Westlake squad and the 21-point Lake Travis win. Then last year in Waco, collegiately, Brewer coming out on top in the 24-10 win over Texas with a nice pass and catch there as they snapped the Longhorns' four-game winning streak at that time in the series. And another chapter here this afternoon, first down and 10 for the Bears from their own 29-yard line. Brewer going to hand it off to John Lovett, and Lovett with a nice sprint to pick up about 12 on the play and move the chains. Here's a look at the numbers from the game last year between these two as Baylor won it 24 to 10. Fierce competitors on the field. Their games eerily similar, but as Sam Ellinger told us yesterday, they've become good friends off the field. Brewer up top over the middle, and a nice catch by R.J. Sneed, a guy that has to play well today, Allison. Down to you. Guys, Ellinger, Brewer, they've been competing rivals since Pop Warner, really, and the guy that's seen it all is Texas tight end Cade Brewer. Now, he is one of Charlie's best friends. He's now roommates with Ellinger, and he said the thing that's crazy is they are so similar on the field. They play with this intense fire and passion, but they are totally opposite off the field. Sam, super outgoing, talkative. Charlie, a little more even keel, laid back, a little quieter. And I have to say, guys, when Charlie found out Cade was moving in with Sam, his rival, he texted him and said, uh, you know you're moving in with a quarterback that's never beat me, right? You had to give him a little bit of a hard time. <laughs> Bumping their gums a little bit about this one. A nice, precise pass to Fleeks for another first down for the Bears. Brewer seems to be in a little bit of a rhythm here, Dusty. They got a little up-tempo going, running the football. They've hit two counters on this and then a couple of play action. And there, Josh Fleeks, nice job catching that on his back hip. Ball slightly thrown behind him. But Josh Fleeks makes the grab and picks up another first down. Third first down here already on this fast-paced moving drive. Fleeks had that touchdown catch against West Virginia in their last game three weeks ago. Under five minutes to go in the first quarter, Brewer pulls it out. Pass complete to Ebner. And he's pushed out of bounds a couple of yards shy of the first down. Preston Ebner. I like that play design. Two running backs in the backfield and this getting Treston Ebner the ball in space on the perimeter, allowing him to utilize that speed and shiftiness. And as you'll see, and ball coming out very quick of Charlie Brewer's hand. Trips left for the Bears. R.J. Sneed, the receiver to the top of your screen. Play clock down to 10. Yeah, 
Little bubble screen. Pass complete. Not a lot of traction on that, though. Complete to Gavin Holmes. Dusty third down and short for the Bears. Yeah, to me, this is where Charlie Brewer in the run game, either looking at Wildcat or a quarterback run game, third and short traditionally has been what this Baylor offense has done in years past and here early on in the season, very much the same. Third and one. Just inside the 25-yard line. Brewer's going to keep it himself. Got a nice surge and more than enough for the first down. Brewer down to the 21-yard line. He's the only quarterback in school history to start all four years. And as Coach Aranda was telling us and his offensive coordinator echoing the sentiment, Larry Fedora saying that Brewer doesn't say a lot, but when he does decide to express himself, his teammates listen. Under three minutes to go in the first quarter, first and ten, Bears. Out of the backfield to Ebner, trying to get into space, turn the corner. Boy, you saw that turbo kick in by Treston Ebner. And it looks like he got enough for another first down at the 10-yard line. For that play to work, you have to have good perimeter blocking. It's Josh Fleeks, it's Tyquan Thornton doing their job on the perimeter to help spring Treston Ebner for a nice game. Again, getting him the football in space, such a point of emphasis. Be creative, find different ways to get him touches and force the hand of that Longhorn defense. He is the shiftiest of their tailbacks. Love it in the backfield. Brewer going into the end zone. Tipped and incomplete. And it looks like we got a flag as well. Josh Thompson was defending back there against Thornton. Tyquan Thornton, the tall, rangy receiver from Miami. Here's another look at it. A little hand fighting there. Is there is no foul for pass yeah. interference. Second down. I was going to say, if anything, yeah. I thought Tyquan Thornton kind of pushed off on him yeah. to create that separation. I thought that was well defensed by Josh Thompson in the corner of the end zone. Good no call. Way to get that right by the officials. Thompson back in the lineup after missing the second half of the Oklahoma game a couple of weeks ago. He's maybe their best cover corner. Second and goal. There's a look at Thornton matched up against the same guy, Josh Thompson. Brewer, quarterback draw, got a block, and is brought down at about the two and a half. Third down and goal, B.J. Foster making the tackle. Upended there. Charlie Brewer is showing his toughness. And again, anytime they get in the red zone, closer they get to the goal line, Charlie Brewer not afraid to call his own number. Crucial third down here. Watch for R.J. Sneed at the top of your screen. He'd love to go to him on third down. Brewer is going to keep it. And man, he was met at about the three-yard line. It's going to be fourth down and goal. I mean, there was a bevy, a host of tacklers there to meet him. It's a solid job. Overshown. Solid job there by the Texas defensive line, getting good knockback, and the second level defenders flow in. This is the right call here by Dave Aranda. Productive drive, take the points while you can get them. Last thing you want to be to drive all the way down here and walk away with nothing to show for it on the board. John Mayer is in to attempt this field goal. He's one of three on the season. He has a long of 47. With under a minute to go here in the first quarter play, Baylor looking to pierce the scoreboard first, which they do, taking a 3 to nothing lead with 49 seconds to go. Big stop, though, for the Longhorns inside the five, though, Dusty. The quarterback run game right up the middle. Watch here. Just watch as we're going to see these guys get up the field and create a new line of scrimmage. Up the field, nowhere to go. Overshone gets in there. And it's really well done by the Texas defense, stacking up the Baylor offensive line and really allowing nowhere for Charlie Brew to go with the football. Bowed their necks and came up with a much needed stop to force them to three. Have they got somebody spying Brewer today, you think, with all of his running productivity? I don't know if you necessarily spy him. You have to yeah. be aware of him. Right. 
I don't think that it's to the to the level that you're going to have to dedicate one man solely for his run game. But clearly, when you play Brewer, when you when you play this Baylor offense, just have to be cognizant of the fact that he can and will run with the football, especially in the red zone. Hey, Dusty, for a team that hasn't played in three weeks, they look okay. They look pretty precise right now. Very well done by this football team, as you mentioned. You know, not knowing as of yesterday exactly what this roster would look like. They've been getting guys back all throughout the week, having to shut down the facility for 10 days. Even talking with their coaches, they didn't fully know yeah. what to expect. Tell you what, with all the changes that we've made to our boards, my chart looks like my English teacher marking it back in high school with all those circles and mistakes on it. Oh, you're just going to stay quiet on me, huh? Like you never had one of those papers? I, I know, man. <laughs> I, everything I put down was right. Let's go back to Matt Berry in the studio. I had Iowa State a couple of weeks ago against Texas Tech. That is a good, solid football team, Dusty. Big game there. First down and 10 for the Longhorns from their own 25. Gonna hand it off to Ingram. Ingram tackled by Terrell Bernard. That's going to be a nice matchup throughout this game. Terrell Bernard, the 6'1 junior. Really the heartbeat of that offense, pardon me, defense for Baylor. Productive, very smart player, and when you watch the tape of Baylor's defense, you can, it's hard not to fall in love with number two, Terrell Bernard. Plays extremely hard, extremely smart, always in the shot, and the type of player that any defensive coordinator would love to have. Second down and nine. They're going to hand it off again to Ingram. Ingram gets to the edge. And Ingram picks up the first down. Dusty, I want to ask you, how much does a run like that mean to Ingram trying to get his confidence back from the fumble? Well, I think it's huge. You know, obviously, big fumble against TCU, first carry against Oklahoma. Kind of got into his head, but it sounds as if he's been confident throughout the week. And a little stiff arm and a first down, exactly what Keontae Ingram needs. You heard the boom in the background. That's the end of the first quarter of play. Ingram with a nice run. His team down three to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Back to Austin for this rivalry right after this. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. Objection! Overruled. And right now, earn 100,000 bonus miles when you spend $20,000 in your first year. I'll allow it. What's in your wallet? This season, for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities, Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Absolutely beautiful day here in Austin, Texas. Look at the waterfront and went for a nice walk along there yesterday. Just an absolutely beautiful city. 3-0, home team losing right now and a handoff to Ingram. Ingram with another nice game. You know, Tom Herman, Dusty, told us something interesting. He said that we went ones against ones Tuesday and Thursday this week. We've had three games come down to the final possession. We've had a chance to fix a lot of our errors and get right for this game. Here's Ellinger. Going to take off with it. And he picks up a first down. Bernard with the tackle. Wanted to get that physicality back throughout the course of the week, Jonesy. They wanted to emphasize run the ball, stop the run. And here already 11 runs to just two passes for this Texas offense. They run it again here. Nowhere to go this time for Ingram, who's going to be brought down for a loss of about one. You know, Herman also said we were fresher. Uh, we really needed the reps because we didn't have any banked reps with all of the COVID variances they've had to undergo. They've got a new offense, a new defense, and the entire team to a man sees how close we really are. Second down and 11 from the 48 of Baylor. Looking for a breakthrough. Wiley in motion now sets on the left slot. Play clock at five, a little blitz coming. They hand it off to Robinson. And Robinson with a nice gain of about six on the play. Doyle making the tackle. 
They got a tip there. They called out, identified Sam Ellinger and Kate Brewer. The tight end identified Petrie was coming. Check at the line of scrimmage. Run the zone away from the blitzer. Well done by Sam Ellinger, getting him into a better play after identifying where the pressure was coming from. Sets up a third down and six. Love to look for Joshua Moore. Third down. Been a great target for him so far this season. Bottom of your screen. Looks to his left, fires, and it's complete to Eagles. Brennan Eagles, a lanky target at all of 6'4 with a catch. He's 6'4", 230. He's a big body guy. And good protection, good pocket for Sam Ellinger to step into the throw. And how about going up, using those strong hands to bring the catch in? They set up a little receiver screen to the same side of the field. Same receiver, Eagles hauls it in and picks up a few before being brought down by Bernard. Had some big targets here for Sam Ellinger. 18, the tight end, Jared Wiley. We see Brennan Eagles there at six foot four on back-to-back -back catches. Not a lot of little guys out there. Blitz off the corner. Ellinger throws it. Incomplete intended for Wiley. And a funky looking play, second down and six. Looked like he was gonna run it, then last moment, you see Petrie flying in off the perimeter. I thought he was almost over the line of scrimmage there, Dusty. Floated out to his tight end. Look here from the side. That's and close. That was close. It's very close. I think the back of his foot, though, still behind the original line. Yeah, he's got to be entirely over the line of scrimmage. Third down and six. Ingram into the boundary. Got a lot of work to do, and he's knocked out of bounds. About three yards shy of the first down by McVeigh. So an interesting scenario here. If you're Brennan, pardon me, Herman, do you go for it? I think they're going to kick it. I think similar to the way Dave Aranda was thinking, quality drive, let's try to cash in and get some points. Conservative play call there by Mike Yursich, keeping the ball on the ground to Keontae Ingram and trying to get him on the perimeter. Cameron Dicker coming in to attempt this field goal. From about 41 yards out. He's four of six on the season. They get the timeout, there's going to be delay of game. Delay of game. Man. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. So 41 turns into a 46 yard attempt now. Tom Herman saying he wanted him to reset the play clock. I don't think he's going to get that from the official. and. Going back to what we said, keys to the game, don't beat yourself. Yeah. Critical mistakes at untimely moments has cost Texas so far and cost them five yards here in this field goal attempt. I talked about Buchevsky getting a punt block, two of them. Dicker has had a field goal blocked already this season as well, and a little motion up front, a flag down. They're going to bring this one back. The kick went through, so he got a practice shot. He's going to get those five yards back. Offside, defense number 90, five-yard penalty, fourth down. T.J. Franklin inside. See him in here. Yeah, made contact. Actually, 92 looked like Josh Landry. He had some One company. Initially moved. So we're back to 41 for Cameron Dicker. Made a 33-yarder against Oklahoma a couple of weeks ago. This one is up. And he knocks the game at three apiece with 12-10 to go in the first half. Dicker now five of seven on the season. Texas trying to get right when we come back.
All right, Matt. And back here, Texas tying the game at three apiece. As they get ready to kick off, the Longhorns looking to snap a two-game losing streak. They've had three consecutive games go down to the last possession. Back deep, keep an eye on Ebner for Baylor. He already has two kickoff returns for touchdowns. He had an opportunity earlier on a kickoff return. He won't hear. It'll come out first down and 10 from the 25-yard line for the Bears who haven't played in three weeks prior to today. You know, the Longhorns now play on a field named after Heisman winners Earl Campbell and Ricky Williams. You talk about excellence, one of a number of diversity initiatives announced by the university to, in July to create a more diverse and welcoming, inclusive campus. And kudos to the Texas administration recognizing that and some of their wonderful lineage and history along the way. First down and 10. Brewer caught at the 45-yard line. What a grab on that play by R.J. Reed. Giving the Bears a first down and 10. Brewer fires again went the same way to the same receiver Sneed and that's going to be a flag on the play it's going to go against Green Jalen Green defending on the play and right back to it back shoulder on the first one go right back to Sneed again and Jalen Green it seemed to me just kind of panicked last minute he's in good shape he's got that left arm around the shoulder and he tugs it Pass interference. pulls Sneed to the ground defense number three 15 yard penalty automatic first down they're targeting R.J. Snead a lot, Dusty. That's a guy that Dave Aranda and Larry Fedora, the offensive coordinator, said had to play well today. Jalen Green on the sidelines. First down and 10 for the Bears at the 40. Brewer fakes the handoff over the middle. Complete again to Snead. Inside the 30, it's going to be marked that the 28. He was working against Thompson and another first down for Baylor. Another RPO counter action coming your way. Backers come up, middle of the field's wide open, and Charlie Brewer finds his favorite target once again, R.J. Sneed. Third time he's targeted him in consecutive plays. From the 28. Brewer looking to take off, man. Spinning like a record on a turntable a couple of times, but nowhere to go. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Got a little dizzy there yeah, with all that did. spin. Yeah, and me spinning around up here in the booth. Initial spin move was nice to elude the defender, and a little too much on the second spin move by Charlie Brewer. Second down and 11. Brewer on the toss. This is going to be Ebner trying to get to the corner. Kent and brought down for a one yard loss on the play. Jomo making the tackle for the Longhorns defensively. Third down and 12 to go. Stearns also in on the play. Good team defense in pursuit to the near sideline to get the negative play and set up third and long situation. We've seen R.J. Sneed quite a bit. Another guy they want to get involved, Tyquan Thornton. See if maybe they take a shot to him here on third and long. Ebner in motion to the top of your screen. They go empty. Brewer. Downfield, almost picked off. Did he get in bounds? Did he catch it? No. But an acrobatic play and attempt by B.J. Foster. Almost had himself an interception. Well, two high safeties. B.J. Foster just reading the eyes of Charlie Brewer and kind of cheating over there, anticipating he's going to continue to go for R.J. Sneed. And an excellent opportunity for B.J. Foster to get a huge interception, unable to bring it in, but a quality pass breakup on third and long. Nice job anticipating what's coming, reading the quarterback's eyes, and getting the PBU. Chris Ash's defense getting a win here. Baylor's going to wow. punt and not attempt a field goal. <laughs> Mayers has a long of 47 this year. This would have been a 47-yard attempt. Delay game. Kicking team. That penalty's declined. Still fourth down. So they're going to keep it right there. They had some kicking issues in their last game against West Virginia. You kind of wonder if that's crept in the mind of Dave Aranda trying to play the field position game here. And Texas will 
respectfully decline the penalty. Isaac Power into punt. Nose of the football down and he blasts it through the back of the end zone. They'll come out first down and 10 the other way for Ellinger and the Texas Longhorns. We're tied at three in Austin. Come on back. Hey, my name is Dante, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A Nuggets is the authentic taste of it. You can tell it's freshly breaded, seasoned perfectly, and it just has this unique taste that compares to no other. Once I bite into it, mmm, mmm. My name is Meredith, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese is the oven-toasted cheesy top layer. If home had a flavor, it would be Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese. I'm passionate about it. <laughs> In Utah State, Aranda following his head coach Gary Anderson to the Power Five as D.C. at Wisconsin 2013. In 2016, he moved to LSU and became associate head coach as well as defensive coordinator under Ed Orgeron. And then this past January, three days after LSU beat Clemson in the national championship game, Aranda hired as Baylor's head coach. And boy, that's when the fun just started. <laughs> he takes the job, hires a staff, fills things out and has to deal with COVID-19. This is their first game in three weeks. Haven't played since October the 3rd. Ellinger under duress. Ellinger is going to be sacked back at the eight-yard line. Great pursuit and a sack by Bradley King. Well, William Bradley King was a huge addition to this defense. Huge addition to this defense. Transferring in from Arkansas State. Makes an inside move on Samuel Cosme and does an outstanding job getting him to the ground. Look, taking the practice to the field. Mm. Worked a little inside move. That was with the rip. The sack there with the arm over. Outstanding job by William Bradley King. A huge transfer for this Baylor defense. A guy that impressed his teammates in the early going when practice began. Ellinger out of the end zone on the post. Wide open. Caught. And nothing but real estate. Tarek Black. Finally pushed out of bounds and a first down. A huge play for Ellinger and Texas. Well, exactly what they needed, a big play down the field. And it's a blown coverage in the back end. Safety working there. Jaron McVay, who is in today for Christian Morgan, who is out. And Tariq Black with a big gain, 72 yards in all. Blown coverage and a big play for this Texas offense. Johnson in the backfield, and Baylor forced to call a timeout. Looks like they had a personnel issue. The Bears stung on that long play by the Longhorns. First and 10, Texas. We're going to take a timeout, too, and come right back. Stick around. Hey there, I'm Aisha, and my favorite thing about the Chick-fil-A Nuggets is how easy you can share them with your friends. They taste fresh, they're crispy, you can taste that every single one is unique. The top tier best chicken nuggets ever. You guys should put that in the commercial. Hi, my name is Brian, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A mac and cheese is you can taste the different types of cheeses and the blends that they use, and everything just comes together. It's like a delicate dance. They're like perfection in every bite from the AT&T 5G Skycam. As you'll see here, Jaron McVay, who is in today, he's going to come up. He needs to get depth, never gets depth, as he collisions with the wide receiver, Tariq Black. Eyes in the backfield, heels planted, nobody over the top. That's the safety's position. He wasn't there, wide open. And how about the speed by JT Woods to walk down? Tariq Black down the field. Could be a touchdown-saving tackle there for this Baylor defense. They got a lot of track and field guys on that defense for the Bears. Very fast. First down and 10. Ellinger pulls it out. He's going to take off and tiptoe out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. It'll be second down and about five to go. Keep in mind that Christian Morgan right there, the starting free safety, is out today. And that's a key piece. You saw what happened on that previous play. Chemistry, communication, all those things coming into play with the discontinuity that they had in Baylor. 
Second down and five. Ellinger going to keep it. Looking for a block and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Bradley King. Well played there by Bradley King and Ashton Logan. A little zone read. And Sam Ellinger called his own number. Quality oh, leverage there by the Dave Baylor defense. Setting up a third and medium situation. We haven't seen 18 Jared Wiley targeted much. Big tight end. A little play action, locate your tight end as both Cade Brewer and Jared Wiley on the field. Got three receivers to the bottom of the screen. Ellinger tucks it under and gets inside the 10 to about the eight yard line. Bernard making the tackle. Terrell Bernard and Sam Ellinger matching wits today. Takes a shot as he goes to the ground. Big hit there by McVeigh and by Bernard. Sam Ellinger hops right up as they move the sticks. Thought it was interesting asking him about his body maintenance, all the wear and tear he takes. Sleep, hydration, massage, cryotherapy. Mm. A little bit of everything for Sam Ellinger to get ready each and every week. His team looking at a first and goal from the nine. They're substituting, taking their time, getting on and off the field. Ellinger to the sideline, completes it. That's to Brendan Eagles. Eagles working against Milton on the play. Eagles with his third catch. He's been targeted four times, has 20 yards today. Second and goal for Texas. Entering the Sam Ellinger area as B. John Robinson comes in the ball game. Likes to call his own number in these spots. Quarterback run game, a huge part of this offense inside the 10. Joshua Moore in motion. Ellinger had it batted down nicely at the line of scrimmage. Who else? Terrell Bernard. This guy is ubiquitous, folks. Everywhere, sideline to sideline. Number two on the loose here, Dustin. And they move him all over. You see him now come off the edge. Sneaks underneath the tight end and gets right in the throwing lane, anticipating the throw. Gets the pass deflection. Nice play by the junior, Terrell Bernard. You had a great conversation with him earlier this week on your radio show, talking about how he knows the room well when he looks around and sees his teammates this year. Three receivers out to the top of your screen. Ellinger looking into the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Jake Smith. And it's fourth and goal for the Longhorns. It, Jake Smith had a step on his man, Jalen Petrie, but Sam Ellinger unable to locate him. He's going to work to the corner. Nice head fake, nice move. Gets a step past him, and that's a pass that you'd like to see Sam Ellinger wow. be able to complete. His receiver had a step. It's a little bit out past the stretched arms of his intended target. Boy, those are the shots that you got to convert on. Instead, they're going to try and settle for a field goal here. Cameron Dicker back in. Made one earlier. Boy, this one stops right through the uprights. It was close through that left upright. Texas taking a 6-3 lead as Dicker connects from 23 yards out. And this is the 110th edition of Baylor against Texas. Back with more right after this. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase, every day. Objection! My credit card doesn't earn double miles on every purchase. I object to your objection. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase. Order. And may it please the court. Earn 100,000 bonus miles when you spend $20,000 in your first year. I'll allow it. No further questions, Your Honor. Well, just one. What's in your wallet? Remember that National Vote Early Day is October 24th. For more information, visit IamAVoter.com. And welcome back, everyone, to Austin, Texas. And a lower-scoring game, Dusty, than maybe we anticipated so far. It's Big 12 football. <laughs> Defense is galore. Like I said, right? a lower-scoring game than we anticipated. Hey, some people who actually like defense right. okay. enjoy a matchup like this. <laughs> Ebner is going to take a knee. It'll come out first and 20, first and 10 from the 25. Back to Matt in the studio. I 
I got Gaethje in that one. D d d What's that? I said I got Gaethje in that matchup. You do? Fight Island. Listen, yeah. I, th I think you and I need a, a boys trip to Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, and, and check that. Place you and out. I in the, in the octagon together? That, no, Against no, one no. another? No, no. I'm in. You just tell me where. Let's go. Sp spectators. <laughs> Great fight card tonight on Fight Island. First and ten. Brewer surveying and completes the pass to Woodard. Gain of about five on the play, 6.07 to go in the first half. See Brewer getting outside the pocket there, you know, anticipate a lot of quick game, move the pocket, try to help out that offensive line best they possibly can here against Texas. And Bevo unmoved so far by the action. They're going to run it this time. Close to the first down, that's Lovett. I got a picture with Bevo from way back in the day, like late 90s. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. There he is looking right at you. He looks better than I do. Yes, he does. <laughs> He's aged well. Both of you have. Third and one. <laughs> Last time in this spot, they just did a quarterback sneak. See if Charlie Brewer calls his own number again. Linebacker walking up. Longhorns loading the box. Brewer's going to keep it. I'm not sure that he got there. That's going to be very close. He appears to be short by mere inches. Good pad leverage by the Texas front. Getting underneath Baylor, getting some penetration. Nowhere for Charlie Brewer to go. Taquan Graham was the first guy to make the hit. Big key there. Looked like it was overshown. Walked up on the offside A gap opposite the nose tackle. The last time they ran that, nobody walked up, and it was an easy for Charlie Brewer to get that first down. He walks up that time. Nowhere for Charlie Brewer to go, and the Texas defense steps up. It gets a big stop. Fourth down and one. And into punt. It's Isaac Power. Fair catch called, and this one is going to bounce harmlessly into the end zone. Come back out first down and 10. Well, tomorrow morning on ESPN at 10 Eastern time, catch Sunday NFL countdown as Sam and the guys celebrate National Tight Ends Day with some help from the 49ers, George Kittle. And Monday Night Football will be a defensive showdown as Aaron Donald and the 4 and 2 Rams host Khalil Mack and the 5 and 1 Bears at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, as well as ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. The Bears pass rush, ferocious. Yes. You know, like the old monsters of the Midway. Like what I'm seeing there in Chi Town. An old bear approving here in the booth, and the Dodger fans obviously happy with them leading two games to one in the World Series. First down and 10 for Texas. Ellinger is 5 of 9 for 91 yards so far. Looks to throw again. Taking a shot up top. Incomplete at the 45-yard line. Intended for Epps, that 6-6 big target, working against Milton. Yeah, they had the size mismatch. It's an outstanding job by Milton, running stride for stride with him in excellent position and going up with his left, left hand to get the pass breakup. Get that 6'6 six six Epps matched up on a corner, taking that shot down the field, but quality defense results in an incompletion. Second down and 10 for the Bears. Pardon me, the Longhorns. They're going to run it. Ingram pushed out of bounds about the 22 Allison. Well, Jonesy, keep an eye on the Baylor defenders' hands when they look to wrap up the ball carrier. Coaches want them to be more aggressive, trying to force a takeaway. They said the opportunity is there specifically with Ingram when he carries the ball. They said you guys got to get to the ball, knock it out, take your shot on the football whenever you get a chance. Ingram, of course, with the well-documented fumbling issues against TCU and against Oklahoma. Third down and eight. Joshua Moore in motion. Ellinger, they brought a little blitz after him. And they find Ingram on the screen. And he gets enough for the first down. Great patience by the Longhorn. It's an excellent play call by Mike Jurisic. Pressure coming from the field. Ellinger locates it. They've got the screen set up to the boundary. Nice job out in front by Kurt Setter. Okafer, quality blocks and a big pickup on third and long. Out to the 32. Ellinger going to keep it himself on a nice quarterback draw. 
and brought down at the 48-yard line. Another first down on the Bears' side of midfield, but there's a flag down on the play. Bradley King making the tackle for Baylor. Approaching three minutes to go in a low-scoring first half. There is no foul for illegal substitution. That was the 11th player. It's the quarterback counter. They love to run that with Sam Ellinger. Nice hole inside, and I love the vision for the cutback by the quarterback. Kind of slow plays it, and as soon as he sees that hole open up, you see the burst through the hole and the cutback to the near side of the field. Texas putting together a nice drive here before the close of the half. Ingram in the backfield beside Ellinger. Ellinger going to take another shot downfield. Moore. Wrestling match caught by Joshua Moore. And he flexed on Milton for the big catch. Wow, they've been working on the deep ball all week in practice. Mike Yersich told us, watch the adjustment in the air. High point it and bring it to the body. Strong hands and great adjustment by Joshua Moore. Ellinger keeps it himself. Gets inside the five to about the three yard line. It'll be second and goal, but what a grab by Joshua Moore, whose confidence continues to grow. Going back to a couple of weeks ago against Oklahoma. There's a look at Moore, who prior to that game against the Sooners was bumping his gums, talking a bunch of trash to some of the Sooners players in the tunnel. Imbued with confidence here this afternoon. Second and goal. Ellinger into the end zone, open, touchdown Texas, more for more. And Jenna Ellinger, QB1's mom, approving. He missed his open target on the last series, wasn't going to miss Joshua Moore there, wide open in the end zone. Love the play call, play action, pressure in his face, no panic, stays calm, and Joshua Moore comes wide open, and Sam Ellinger not going to miss. A big score for Texas late in the first half. They lead by 10 now, 13 to 3. That big 42-yard pass catch to Joshua Moore set up that score. All right, here we go. Joshua Moore's going to come out of your screen all the way. It's going to be a play action. And watch Ellinger. He's going to move to his left when the pressure comes inside. Rolls out to his left, locates the wide open Joshua Moore. Well done by the senior quarterback. Doesn't panic with the pressure in his face. Joshua Moore gets a little pick from his teammate as Milton's trying to chase. Fourth touchdown, fourth game out of five. Joshua Moore with a touchdown catch so far this season. And Mrs. Ellinger. Yeah, she got reason to be happy. QB1 with the touchdown toss to Joshua. Don't call me Josh Moore. With 1.53 to go in the first half. Seventeen touchdown toss of the season for Sam Ellinger. Let's go back to Matt in the studio. Okay, Matt, back here. Baylor with its singular timeout remaining. Going to try and make some lemonade here. They got a little bit of time to potentially get into field goal range, maybe a little bit more. Four receivers out in this formation. And now they empty it out. Poor over the middle completes it. First down catch. Number 21, Josh Fleeks. This tight window throw to Josh Fleeks. Yeah. As soon as he clears a linebacker, balls on him from Charlie Brewer. Nice way to start this drive. Brewer was the guy that said, we're at the halfway point of the season. We have to start getting out of our own way. And he does it again with another completion. 
out to the 40-yard line is about where his forward progress was. Catch made by Tyquan Thornton. Tackle by Overshone. As soon as Thornton catches the football, it's catch tackle. Not much to the grab. Brewer back to pass, given time. And it's batted down at the line of scrimmage by Collins. Dusty, you mentioned tackling by the Texas defense. Chris Ash told us that's been the biggest improvement from game one to now. Here's the batted down pass. And I love this Alfred Collins. He's a true freshman, and man, does he pop on the tape, a bright future. And you see as he knows he's not going to be able to get there and get off the block, just gets that big bear paw up and gets the pass batted down. Nice play by the true freshman Alfred Collins. Defensive coordinator Chris Ash saying that Collins is one of the biggest surprises. A pleasant one here early in the season. Third down and six for the Bears. Got a whistle in the Longhorns and a call a timeout with 109 timeout. to go in the half. Texas, 30-second timeout. Well, they're going to draw up a defense, and now we take a look at this week's AP rankings brought to you by Allstate. Boy, Clemson taking care of its business again. 47-21 against Syracuse. What jumps off the page there at you, Dusty? Well, Oklahoma State with yep. a 14-7 lead over Iowa State. A big, highly anticipated game in the Big 12. And then Indiana right now beating Penn State 10-7. Top 10 Nittany Lions. Didn't get good news this week. Journey Brown not going to be with the team for the foreseeable future. And statement there by the Hoosiers with an early lead. And the debut for the Big Ten. Yeah, first week of play in earnest for the Big Ten is... Well, there's some other conferences. The Mountain West Conference. Air Force taking on San Jose State. Shout out to Coach Brennan doing good things out there in San Jose with the Spartans. Third down and six. Brewer under pressure. Escapes. Running for the first down. And just gets by the marker to move the chains. Wow, that's what you get in a savvy Smart senior. Charlie Brewer playing a little bit of Houdini here. It's an <laughs> outstanding rush. You see Osai get there first. And Charlie Brewer, just a foot race, outruns Overshone to the sidelines and picks up a first down. From the 49-yard line, one minute to go in the half. Brewer. It's off the carpet, incomplete intended for Sneed. So it'll be second down and 10, 53 seconds to go. Take a look at this pass one more time. Good call by the official skips off the turf. And Charlie Brewer under immense pressure there. Ojimo with a hit on the quarterback as Charlie Brewer tried to deliver that football. Second down and 10 with Sneed split out to the bottom of your screen. Sneed is their leading receiver. He's been targeted 10 times, has four catches for 62 yards. Brewer goes the other direction and almost intercepted. Jamison got a hand on it. And boy, he'd love to have that one back. Oh, that's a third time Texas defensive backs with their hands on the football. You see Jamison, it's just cover two. He's going to get more depth as he's reading the quarterback's eyes. Steps right in front of that pass as he jogs it off, wishing <laughs> he could have held on to that for an interception. Third down and 10 now for Baylor. R.J. Steed's been the go-to guy in this first half. Brewer steps up just in time, got hit as he released the ball. Jacoby Jones was one of the first guys to get there, and we have a Texas player shaken up on the field. It looks like Joseph Osai. It is, and that's not a good sign for Texas. One of the premier edge players, not just in the Big 12, but in college football. Hope he's okay. Move by Jones with the long arm. Well, they had him coming and sandwiched from both directions. But yeah, Joseph Osai, we had a chance to visit with him a little bit earlier yesterday from Conroe, Texas, an hour north of Houston. Leads the team in total stops coming into the game. 
really the heartbeat of that Longhorn defense. So impressed with watching his tape, an explosive first step, learning how to be a great rusher. He's got fantastic hands. I was asking him who he watches, who he emulates. Talked about Von Miller with his speed and size, and talked about Cam Jordan with his ability to use his hands, and he's hoping he's going to be okay. Such a key piece well, the way for this he, Longhorn defense. Yeah, Dusty, the way he plays, really reflective in the way that he listens to his music, said he listens to 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying. There's no gray area in the way he plays. They're going to review whether it was a forward pass. I think it should be a pretty quick review. He sure looked like it, He Dusty. gets hit, and to me, he's still got possession of the ball as he yeah. throws it forward. That's the review on the field. One more look at Brewer. Looked like he was being hit by both Texas defenders as the arm was coming forward and throwing. Have to imagine the rule on the field stands incomplete. The bigger story, though, is that. Not just for this game, but for yeah. moving forward. He's really favoring that left arm as they take Joseph Osai back to the locker room prematurely. It's like uh, it was definitely a forward pass, though, as Osai heads into that locker room. Chris Ash's defense has done a nice job here in the first half, allowing just three points, and that's a big part of the defense. Number 46, Osai heading into the locker room. The officials still out there communicating. We're told it's an incomplete pass. They're just getting the down and distance fixed. Should be right there. And of course, sometimes when it takes this long, they're making sure that they have the proper amount of time on the clock as well. There it is at 45, call it 44 maybe. Well, this is one of the longest reviews I've had this year. They're definitely taking a long, hard look at this. Might be having some issues with their communications. I would think 45 seconds on the clock. Dusty, you want to give me your phone number? Fourth and 10 <laughs> they can, they from can. what I would call the 49-yard line. Yeah, we, we can fix it for them. They want to hit us at the hip with a text. It's all good. They're going to rule it an incomplete pass with 45 seconds to go. Fourth down. After further review, it was an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down. Clock operator, please reset the game clock to 45 seconds. We're told they were having some communications issues with their equipment down there on the field between there and the replay booth. So fourth and 10. Be intrigued to see how Texas plays this coming out. Already got the 10 point lead, but they do have two timeouts in tow. Coming off a drive where they just hit a big shot down the field to Joshua Moore. They get aggressive or take their lead into half. Isaac Power into punt. A high spiral. Man, this is a moonshot. And down nicely at about the nine yard line. Big Ten football is back, folks. You can see the oldest trophy game in college football history is number 21, Minnesota. The Gophers taking on number 18, Michigan. For the Little Brown Jug tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC, as well as the ESPN app. And this will be the 98th meeting for the Little Brown Jug. First time they played for it was 1903. Wow, when Fielding Yost didn't trust the Gophers wouldn't tamper with their water on a... So a five-gallon red wing pottery water jug was purchased for 30 cents. Talk about being paranoid, man. Wow. 
He wasn't the first coach to ever be paranoid. Ellinger stepping up into the pocket, going to be sacked right near the line of scrimmage by Doyle. With 23 seconds to go, second and 10. They looked to take a shot. I thought he had Joshua Moore open on the near sideline. Ellinger unable to locate him. Looks like after that, they'll gladly just go ahead and take it to the half. Take a look here on the near side. You'll see it looks like they just lose sight of Joshua Moore. Wow. Nobody runs with him. Ooh. 12, Kalen Barnes, he's stuck with the inside route of Brennan Eagles. Maybe something they found there that they may go back to in the second half. They certainly turned him loose. So the team that leads the nation in scoring points per game, Texas, with just 13 at the break. They lead 13 to three over Baylor. Right now we're gonna send it to Matt Berry, Jesse Palmer, and Joey Galloway in the studio. Guys, take it away. Welcome back everyone to ESPN College Football presented by Tide. Folks, you're watching the Big 12 Conference on ESPN. A look at the state capital of the great state of Texas. Longhorns leading it 13 to three as we get ready for the start of the third quarter. I'm Mark Jones, he's Dusty Dvorak. We're chopping it up here in the 110th edition of this battle between these two schools. Allison Williams down on the sideline joining us in just a bit. Dusty, when you look at going back to last week, Texas doing a nice job of squelching some of the noise surrounding the program, the two-game losing streak, the eyes of Texas post-game coming out here and handling their business. Getting back to football, yeah. and they did exactly what they wanted to do during the week of preparation, run the ball and stop the run. 22 carries in that first half. They're getting back to running the football and only allowed 28 rushing yards to this Baylor Bear offense. So exactly what Tom Herman said they want to do, block out the noise, run the ball, stop the run. Three check marks so far in that first half. He said what they wanted to do was be simple, but not be predictable. And so far, they've done enough offensively to keep that Baylor defense guessing just enough to have a 10-point lead, and they'll get the ball here to start the third quarter of play. Baylor coming into the game one and one. Texas trying to get off that two-game losing streak. Neither of these teams can really afford to drop another one at this juncture of the season in conference play. Remember, the Longhorns, a program that just a couple of years ago was playing for a conference title. And they'll get it first down and 10 from the 25 as we take a look at today's chill performance brought to you by Coors Light. Yeah, it's been a throw game. We had a couple of big throws down the field. Tariq Black, he got turned loose. Big 72-yard gainer before JT Woods walked him down. And man, the play of the game for me so far. Joshua Moore going up, bringing it in. The deep shot, something they worked on so much and capping off that drive as Sam Ellinger, as he does so well, loses the rush, gets outside the pocket, and he locates his open wide receiver. Well done by the Texas passing attack. Just 13 attempts, but extremely potent whenever they went to the air. 146 yards through the air. They're gonna run it here on first down and a nice burst by Robinson. Close to the first down, Allison, what do you have? Tom Herman said the ability to establish the run early is what allowed his offense to open some things up and get some of those shots you guys just showed. He said we did a good job of moving guys off the ball and that set up the big plays, which we'll have to have. And they continue to move the ball, Allison, well on the ground. That was Robinson again, that offensive line. Cosme, one of the leaders on left tackle. Number 52 right there. Angi Lau, the left guard as well. Derek Kerstetter, we've seen him a couple times in screen and running the football. Right side as well. This offensive line has stepped up and played much better at the point of attack. Yeah, Okafor and Jones at guard and tackle on that right side. Doing a nice job. First down and 10. Ellinger going to hand it off again to Robinson into the open field. And another first down, a gain of about 13. Woods finally making the tackle. And you see his speed and elusiveness in the open field. Big hole off the left side. Bijan Robinson, one of the high, most highly rated running backs coming out of high school, getting it done here to start this second half. Ellinger patiently behind the left side of that offensive line. Angliao and Cosme leading the way. This offense moves with expedience, folks. Seventh quickest in FBS play. It average of play every 21.2 seconds. 
Second down and three. Ellinger off the play fake. And out of bounds. Smith never really had a shot at that. It'll be third down and three coming up for Ellinger. Sam Ellinger bought himself a little bit of time as he steps into this throw, takes a shot. Not too much, but a little bit of a hit before he goes down. From the 44, third and three. Quarterback run game, very much a part of what they want to do in this spot. He looks to the near side of the field, completes the pass to the big tight end. Check that, it's Eagles, the wideout. And Eagles with a first down. A lot of cushion by Tejada right there, just third and three. He thought he'd be more pressed up. Sam Ellinger saw the cushion, took advantage, easy pitch and catch to move the sticks. Ellinger has single coverage on the outside and knocked away out of the hands of Joshua Moore. Nice play here by Kalen Barnes. Got that big club on the left hand. He goes up, high points it with the right, knocks it away. Sam Ellinger trying to take his shot down the field. He's already located Joshua Moore once. Outstanding athletic play there by the one arm Kalen Barnes. Kalen Barnes, one of those track and field guys with that 10.2900 meter speed. Deep into the play clock goes Texas and Ellinger. Avoiding the rush, nowhere to go. He's going to be brought down. He'll gain about a yard on the play. T.J. Franklin hauling him to the turf. And third down coming up. But Terrell Bernard gets there. And again, just unable to get Ellinger to the ground. No panic. And Ellinger just going to lean forward, take what he can get as he takes a big shot. Looks like the ribs Wow. For 92 Josh Landry before he hits the turf. He takes a pounding, but the guy just continues to get up, show that toughness, and shake it off. He's been knocked out of one of these games against Baylor in the past. Third down and nine. Has time in the pocket, delivers a strike complete at the 20. All the way down to the 13-yard line, Jake Smith route. Bernard making the tackle, but a first down for Texas. It's an excellent route run by Jake Smith. Terrell Bernard working in coverage. A little option route works out. Bernard can't stay with him. And Sam Ellinger finds his wide receiver. Eagles split to the bottom of your screen. Ellinger into the end zone, incomplete. Get and a late court. flag thrown. Woodard, the intended receiver. He was working against Barnes again. Hooked him around the waist. Well, if he hooked him, you know which arm he used because he's got a <laughs> club on the other one. <laughs> Grab him with that right hand on the inside. <laughs> Talking about Barnes with that track and field speed, 10.2900 meter spinner. Speed is nothing new to Baylor. When you look at Olympic champ Michael Johnson, Trayvon Brumell, another... World champion, Jeremy Warner. Now, my pass interference, defense number 12. Ball being placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. My research a little bit different than yours. Okay. I got Boogie Barnes at a 10.04. 10.04. I know you're probably saying you're a track guy, one dated, yeah. but hey, 10.04 is 10.04. He's still flying. Bottom right. line, he's got some wheels. <laughs> first and goal for Texas. Ingram takes the handoff, clinging to the ball with two hands. And Ingram stopped by Terrell Bernard. Ingram securing at that time. So you notice two hands on the yeah. football. Was not trying to reach over to the goal line. As I know Texas fans are unfortunately remember oh so well against TCU at the end of that game about a month ago. Second and goal for Texas now. Ingram again, brought down short of the goal line. 
It'll be third down and goal for Texas. Nice Try running it three times in a row, Dusty? I think this is where you get that zone read and you see the backside of that defense really overcommitting quarterback keep, I would think, here for Sam Ellinger. Bernard has made consecutive tackles defensively for the Bears. Got a game plan for number two. Ellinger looking for a crease. Hit. Hit again. Touchdown, Texas. He got in. He got rocked, but had creased the goal line just enough. Like a battering ram back wow. there. Take a look, great shot down the line. Right there. And he's in, but he took a hit. McVay delivered with the shoulder, but not before Sam Ellinger could cross the goal line. Man, Ellinger has taken some blows, Dusty. Every week. Again, this is just that's a part of the game. That's why I was telling you about the body maintenance. He has to keep up week in and week out. The various things he does to get his body replenished and be able to get back there on the field. Quality drive there. 12 plays, 75 yards, and almost four and a half minutes of clock. Capped off with a Sam Ellinger touchdown. Exactly what Tom Herman, Mike Yursich were looking for coming out of the half. The Longhorns on this opening drive of theirs to the second half. Rolling up their sleeves and running the football. Dicker with the extra point, and they lead by 17 points. I'll tell you what, how many college football players can use cryotherapy? One of those chambers, man. Hey, resources, Dusty. It's the name of the game. <laughs> Is USAA made for? It's made for him, a veteran who honorably served. And it's made for her. She's serving now. We also made USAA for military spouses and their kids. Become a member. Get an insurance quote today. 14s, two semifinals, New Year's Day. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Tide. Doing that floss dance. Okay, why not? My man's team is up by 17, Texas, on a 20 to nothing run right now. 10:25 to go. The Longhorns scoring on their opening drive of the third quarter. Trying to snap that two-game losing streak. Edner going to have a chance here. And brought down at about the 22-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 from there. Allison, what's good? Well, we know Baylor is without a couple of offensive linemen. So Dave Aranda pointing out to me at the half that there is an opportunity to throw the ball quickly because the Texas DBs are playing off of their wide receivers. So they could hit him for some quick strikes. But he also added that they have to find some big plays. So it'll be interesting to see how Larry Fedora calls this game now down 20 to 3, knowing that they can hit the quick strikes, but they need the big plays. Aranda said it's just too hard to sustain these drives of multiple plays. Hmm. Interesting point. Struggling for points right now, just three on the board, and Crawford injured down to the field. This is what transpired moments ago. Ellinger, after taking that big hit down by the goal line, went into the tent to be attended to by the team's athletic training staff. You talked about cryo. Have you ever had cryotherapy? Like I've, yeah, has? I've gotten in there. Okay. Yeah. Are you big time been, though? I know. I'm just. I, I can't afford that kind of treatment. But him. yeah. You know, going back to Allison's point, that was a great report from Larry Fedora. I, you got to do the quick game, move the pocket, help out this offensive line, and if you can establish some quick game, maybe some double moves, that'll allow you to take the shots down the field. They haven't gotten any big chunks here today. Brewer, under some heat, got rid of it and lives to see another down. It'll be second down and 10, but he had pressure on him the entire way. To Quan Graham, makes a nice inside move on the right tackle. Gets in there quickly. Charlie Brewer, not much time whatsoever to survey the field. New coming in, offensive line. Very worrisome, this Baylor offense. On second down to 10, Gavin Holmes in motion to the top of your screen. And he throws it to him, complete. 
knocked out of bounds about three yards shy of the first down. Josh Thompson making the stop on Holmes. His first, this third down so crucial for this Baylor offense because you got to remember at Baylor defense was just on the field for 12 plays. Eight of those were runs, and we talked about the lack of conditioning. A quick three and out not be what this Baylor defense needs. Crucial down here for Charlie Brewer. Look for Tresson Ebner on the perimeter. Ebner sets in the backfield with 10 on the shot clock. Play clock. Comes out of the backfield and Brewer had it knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Coburn got one of those hands up and makes it fourth down and four. Well, it was Ebner. He's run the wheel route, but it was well covered by 52 Jet Bush, as you see him here. And then we're going to see the big bear paw, as you mentioned, right there on Coburn. Shuts down the rush, sees the pass is coming, gets the left hand up, and gets the pass deflection to get his defense off the field. Well done by Jet Bush. The Jack linebacker staying with Tristan Ebner in coverage. That's where Charlie Brewer wanted to go. He wasn't there. Powers punt bounces at the 36-yard line out of bounds. It'll be first and 10 from there. Ellinger was in the tent getting a little bit of treatment. Not enough time for cryotherapy, but maybe a little bit of ice. He'll be back on the field when we come back right after this. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. Objection! My credit card doesn't earn double miles on every purchase. I object to your objection. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase. Order. And may it please the court. Earn 100,000 bonus miles when you spend $20,000 in your first year. I'll allow it. No further questions, Your Honor. Well, just one. What's in your wallet? ESPN College Football is presented by Tide. If it's got to be a clean you can trust, it's got to be Tide Hygienic Clean. Here's a look at John Henderson, played guard at Texas on the football team from 1933 to 35. Folks, he was the oldest living Longhorn letterman until a week ago yesterday when Mr. Henderson passed away at the age of 107. Our prayers going out to his family, and boy, John ran his race. Did he ever? A wonderful life. First down and 10 for John's Longhorns right now. False start here on the near side. Kai Money. Let's start a little bit early. False start, offense number 83, five yard penalty, first down. All right, so they're gonna move it back a little bit. You know, Tom Herman recently had Ryan Holiday, the award-winning author of Ego is the Enemy, speak to his team, speaking about leadership, personal development, ambition, and management skills. And it seems to have had a positive impact on his team here this afternoon, at least. They run the ball. Deontay Ingram is going to pick up a couple of yards. The book mostly about, you know, the argument that people's biggest problems are not caused by external factors such as other people or circumstances. Instead, the author talking about problems stemming from our own attitude, selfishness, and self-absorption, perhaps a way for... Brennan to get the message of team across. Second and 14, Ellinger fires a strike. And what a great catch and effort run by Johnson. Wow. Stayed on his feet after taking a hit. Roshan Johnson refuses to go down. Taking several shots. I mean, Barnes had a free hit on him, though he does only have one hand to wrap up. You see the former quarterback converted into running back a season ago with a tough, hard-fought run after the catch. From the 40. 
Third down and seven. Ellinger is going to be swallowed up and swarmed. Back at the 35. Allison? Jonesy, Tom Herman also tried to address player accountability and brought something back they usually only do in camp. He essentially divides the team into groups of 11, guys from different classes, different positions. And if anybody slips up in your group of 11, if you're late for a meeting or you miss a lift, the whole group runs except for the offending player. He watches. And it's a way for guys just to keep each other in check, hold each other accountable, and just increase some of that self-responsibility and self-policing. You guys know any good team is player-led, and that's something he really wants to see from this Texas group. Accountability and leadership, and that's what you get from situations like that. Build equity amongst the team, and Ellinger saw him limping a little bit, it seemed, to the sidelines. Ruchevsky gets off the punt. Back to the 15, this is Ebner. Ebner on the loose, ran up the back of his own teammate. And is brought down right around the 29-yard line. There's a flag on the play as well. I think they're going to get Baylor for a hold here, Jonesy. During the return, holding, kicking team number 28. That 10-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Timeout. All right, so they'll put it at the 39-yard line, and Baylor with an opportunity here. Folks, Big Ten football is back. Today, tonight, you can see the oldest trophy game in college football history. Number 21, Minnesota, taking on number 18, Michigan, for the Little Brown Jug. Tonight at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC, as well as the ESPN app. It looked cold in Minnesota this morning. Man, I got a game day. I got, I got a picture from my sister-in-law in Minneapolis. There was tons of snow in Minneapolis earlier this week. I saw the guys on game day wearing sweaters and toques on top of their head. This pass complete to Woodard. Check that. It was not Woodard, that was Taekwon Thornton. His counterpart, number nine. Still surprised we haven't seen him getting more of a flow in this game and throughout the course of the season. He was such a weapon for them just a year ago. They're going to run it here on second down. This is Williams. And Williams makes it out to the 35-yard line. Squirrel, they call him. <laughs> Got outstanding speed, explosiveness, and as you saw there, the ability to make you miss in the open field. Hey, Grandma call him Squirrel, I call him Squirrel. 6.30 to go, third quarter. Baylor's got to get to work here offensively, and Squirrel, about two yards shy of the first down. Nice hole off the right side of the offensive line. The UCLA transfer, Jake Burton, get nice push, opening up a quality hole back-to-back -back good runs for the squirrel now he motions out of the backfield Brewer completes it down to the 31 yard line to the tight end Ben Sims offense got a little flow you see they're picking up the pace what do you make of the offensive lines performance so far it was a big question coming in well, I, I think I mean the Texas defense has really stood up they've gotten a lot of pressure on Charlie Brewer and uh, have Baylor hasn't established a run so I think it's kind of been as we anticipated coming into this matchup. This is Ebner still on his feet, lunging for another bare first down around the 21-yard line. Brought down by Chris Brown. And the Bears looking impressive on this drive. A nice hole off the right side. Best drive we've seen from this Baylor offense in quite some time. Larry Fedora pressing all the right buttons so far. Hands it off again to Ebner. Ebner got about four. Tackled by Tavant Tavandre Sweat. Going to push the tempo, play fast. Expect to play fake and a shot at some point here after we've seen several runs in a row. Brewer steps up, tried to run, and is going to be tackled the back of the 21-yard line by Graham. Big third down coming up. Left tackle Khalil, or Khalil Keith. My apologies, left guard, 61. He gets beat by Taquan Graham. Taquan Graham 
of their interior defensive lineman, the best pure pass rusher. He wins and gets home, setting up third and long. R.J. Sneed, been a guy Charlie Brewer typically looks to in these situations. Yeah, he split to the top of your screen. Meanwhile, Tyquan Thornton, number nine, at the bottom. Sneed up top. They run the jet sweep. And Squirrel with nowhere to go. Uh, Fleeks actually brought down by Mitchell. Ojimo completely blows this up. Does an excellent job getting up the field. Not allowing Fleeks to go anywhere. Gets vertical up the field. Forces Fleeks back inside to his help. And then the speed of Juwan Mitchell to get home and get Fleeks to the ground. Nice way to stand up on third and long. It sets up a long field goal attempt. between 46 and 47 yards out. John Mayers. The snap good, the hold good, and the field goal wide left. So what started off as an impressive drive for the Baylor Bears ends up in a missed 43-yard field goal. And they can't afford to miss on opportunities at this stage of the game. Mayers gave it a good run. Missed it by that much. Back to Austin, Texas right after this. That's half the fun of a new house. Seeing what people left behind in the attic. Well, saving on homeowner's insurance with Geico's help was pretty fun too. Well, enjoy your house. Nope. Geico. Welcome back, everyone, to Austin. Mark Jones alongside Dusty Dvorak, Allison Williams down on the sidelines. First and ten for Texas. From Campbell Williams Field, a nice run on first down. Gain of about eight for Ingram. Now time for today's Aflac trivia question. Last season, Sam Ellinger threw for 401 yards against Dave Aranda's LSU defense. Who was the quarterback to throw for more against that Tiger defense? I've got a guess, but I don't know if it's right. One. Hmm. That's what Google's for, right? <laughs> Ingram picks up. The first down, run of about three yards. He's got 183 yards today, not quite the 400 plus, but the score on the scoreboard is what's paramount right now for Ellinger. He'll take it. Brewer in motion. Ellinger was looking at a double move, perhaps. Wide open, I mean wide open at the 14-yard line to Wiley. Huge play for the Longhorn. Well, I've been waiting for him to locate this man all day. Wiley straight up the seam. Safety gets turned around. It's McVay once again, just looks confused back there. And a wide open target that Sam Ellinger not going to miss at six foot seven, 255 pounds. Big pass completion down the field to Jared Wiley. Gained 47 yards on the play. That's Christian Morgan, who's not available for Baylor in the secondary. He'd normally be in there on that play. Under two minutes to go in the third quarter. First and 10 Longhorns from the 14. Coming across the formation. Catch and run. And a nice tackle on the play. That was Dixon making the catch. Woods making the stop. One and a half to go in the third quarter. Second down and six. Texas really done exactly what they wanted to do coming into the day. Running the football to set up chunk plays down the field in the passing game. That's been the mindset and the game plan from the very beginning of this game. And to start this second half, and it's paid dividends, sticking with the run game, allowing shots down the field to open up. Ingram takes it, 
Running with patience, but brought down after a gain of about one by William Bradley King. One of their top pass rushers up front. Third down and five coming up. Ingram comes out of the ball game, and Robinson comes in for him. Ingram getting right today. Holding on to the football, third down and five. John Robinson, excellent job catching the football. Split out wide. Texas going empty. Ellinger with a little backside heat. Going to take off. Takes out his do-it-yourself kit. Touchdown, Texas. And once he gets outside, the tackle box he typically turns into a runner he may have had Bijan Robinson in the end zone but as he gets those shoulders square and those defenders are continuing to retreat in coverage Sam Ellinger gets downhill right now and once that 235 230 pounds gets going it's tough to stop and the game is now 27 to 3 for Texas it's funny how he looks like he's hurt Dusty until it's time to run or perform. <laughs> then he's healthy, like he was on this play. He's such a tough guy to bring down. Thick build, physical runner, and as we're gonna see, just gonna roll to his right. He's gonna have Bijan Robinson in the end zone. It's like he thought about maybe going to him, but as soon as he gets to the numbers, downhill right now, one of the tougher quarterbacks in the country to tackle in the open field. So many times Longhorn fans have seen him do this. Get downhill, lower his shoulder, and barrel into the end zone. It's all smiles for the senior today. As he told us yesterday, didn't have many great memories about playing this Baylor Bear football team. He's making some of those great memories as we speak here today. Mom Jenna, happy about that last play. Son, 13 of 20, 234 yards. He's got two touchdowns in his last three carries. Last for 401 yards against Dave Aranda's defense at LSU last year. As we revisit our Aflac trivia question. 401 Aflac. yards, yep, Mr. Duck, thank you. Who was a quarterback to throw for more? against the Tiger defense last year. Is he making his start to the NFL this week? Down in Miami. Yeah, yeah. there it is. Yep, it was a tough decision by Coach Flores, but Tua can't get the start for the Dolphins this week. He threw for 418. Not surprised. And boy, Ryan Fitzpatrick was a true gentleman in that and very classy in that situation, succeeding that job to Tua down there in Miami. Down. There's a look at the numbers today. Let's see what Brewer can do. A guy that Ellinger's played against since high school completes the pass to Gavin Holmes for the first down. Ten seconds to go here in the third quarter. Baylor has a lot of work to do. That's probably going to be the last play of the third period. Ellinger creating some better memories, more favorable ones this time around against the Bears. It's about accountability and leadership. And it has the Longhorns leading when we come back for the fourth quarter. Who's playing? Does it matter? Nope. Welcome back. Texas leading 27-3 as we get ready for the start of the fourth quarter. A big third quarter for the Longhorns. Just in case you thought that Matthew McGonaghy might be missing his team winning here this afternoon, he's here in so many different sections, ways, shapes, and forms, and looks. I love him in Tropic Thunder, Dusty. I just want you to know. He played the role of the agent. I <laughs> Look, I know who he played. One of my favorite actors. <laughs> okay. But let's be real. I mean, he, that's that's not his greatest I role. know, I know. He's better than that. 
He days. was funny, though. He was hella funny, though. He's been great in a lot of movies. <laughs> I would have to say we're, oh, shirtless Matthew McConaughey. I would have to think the days that confused, um, going back kind of where it all started and put him on the map, it'd have to be one of my favorites. Big Lauren Horns football fan. His team leading comfortably right now at the start of the fourth quarter. Second down and nine for Baylor. Backside heat on Brewer. Got it away in time. The pass complete to Josh Fleeks. Good anticipation there by Charlie Brewer. As Josh Fleeks just comes open. Ball was on him on time and on target. As you mentioned, pressure coming from the edge. Charlie Brewer stands in the pocket firm. Fires a nice pass in the middle of the field. From Texas' side of midfield, Brewer over the middle wide open. And a nice catch at the 34-yard line by Gavin Holmes and another first down. And a late flag on the play as well. Jamison making the hit. Brewers now 21 to 31 for 179 yards on the afternoon. Personal foul targeting defense number five. The previous play is under further review. I knew when that flag came out, that was likely what they were going to take a look at. Let's see. Why? Well, I, I don't. Uh. Uh. I don't think so. No, I mean, I, that was a me, miss. That was a miss. Deshaun Jameson, he lowers his shoulder. He moves his head to the side. I hope this is wiped away. I'm actually surprised, Dusty, that's even up for review right now, the way it looked there. It looked like Jameson did all the things you coach and you teach. Again, as he was angling his body more so to the side. Yeah. Wasn't leading with the crown of the helmet. No, and he did not. There's no launch. And he did not make contact in the head or neck area. Be surprised if they don't wave this off. Well, we can only hope that their communications are working this time, so it doesn't take as long as the last one did. 13.55 to go here at the start of the fourth quarter, and uh, the fans are looking at the replay on the big board, the fans that are able to attend this game, some 13 to 15,000, you hear a smattering and a chorus of boos showering down onto the field as they voice their displeasure. Another point of note on this, if this isn't wiped off, remember, since we are in the fourth quarter, he would have to miss the first half of the next game, and they've right. got a huge game and Stillwater, Oklahoma, next Saturday on Halloween. Yeah, the other big game, uh, as you mentioned, Stillwater, Oklahoma State playing Iowa State right now in the Big 12. Looks like they've come to a conclusion. Here's the call. There is no foul for targeting. Result of the play is the first down. Let's carry on then. First down, Baylor from Texas's 34-yard line. Glad that that function is in place to wipe it away when they do get it wrong. Yeah. Such a taxing penalty, obviously not just the 15 yards, but to pull a player off. And if it's in the second half, miss the first half of the next game. When it happens, I understand. Call it accordingly, but when it's not there, good that they can wipe it off. Brewer out of the shotgun. Hands it off. They run a reverse. Ebner throws it. Back to Brewer, who makes the catch and a nice gain on the play, but there's a flag as well. There were a lot of moving parts on that play. A little Philly special there? Yeah. Illegal formation, more than four in the backfield, offense. There you go. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. You knew that was coming, Dusty, on a play with that many moving pieces. So we'll take a look here. Legal formation. Too many guys in the backfield. Yeah, the flag goes up immediately. Easy call for this near side official. But okay, Charlie Brewer. <laughs> First down and 15, made a nice catch. Looking to throw here. Complete underneath to Ebner. Boy, he hit one of the defenders there with some sauce. And Overshone pushes him out of bounds. And no time for Brewer. Ojimo gets in the backfield almost immediately. Then it's an outstanding job by Treston Ebner in the open field. Makes the initial guy miss. A little spin move there. 
before he gets escorted out in the sidelines. From the 28-yard line, it'll be second down and four. That's the B button back in the day. Oh, yeah. On the spin. <laughs> Brewer over the middle. Complete down to the seven-yard line. A wrestling match for the ball. And it was Sims that came away with it. Fought just a little bit harder, and it's first down and goal for the Bears. Again, good anticipation by Charlie Brewer. Anticipating the post come open. Gets just inside the safety, and as he makes his cut, ball is on him. Good strong hands by Sims to secure the catch. Brewer on a quarterback draw, takes off. And he's tackled at about the three-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Post play jostling there with Overshone involved. Seven, John Lovett. A little pushing and shoving going on. No love lost here between the Longhorns and the Bears. These two schools have played 110 times. Texas the overall leader in the series. Second down and goal here. Brewer off the fake, had it batted down by the guy we were just talking about, Overshone. Man, he is long and used that reach, Dusty. And watch him, as, as soon as he anticipates pass, watch him get in the throwing lane, anticipating the slants coming right in the throw lane, gets the pass breakup, nice play by the former safety turn linebacker on the pass breakup. Third and goal. Brewer, easy, touchdown Bears, love it. Great execution in Baylor here in the fourth quarter with their first touchdown of the game. You gotta love it, they're in man-to-man -man coverage. He's gonna sneak out here and it's gonna be six, Jawan Mitchell, who needs to run with him in man coverage. He gets caught in the trash, as you can see. Three different crossing routes cut him off. No one there to run with Lovett. Easy walk-in touchdown, first of the day for this Baylor offense. With 11.24 to go in the game, they finally get a touchdown. Brewer is gonna stay in for the two-point conversion here. Lovett in the backfield. Brewer looks the other way, got it off just in time, out of bounds, incomplete. Tried to hit Thornton. So it stays at 27 to 9. Tyquan Thornton trying to run a tightrope on the back of the end zone, foot just out of bounds. We'll see how Texas responds on the other side. Who's playing? Does it matter? Nope. Today as Diego Rossi and LAFC take on the LA Galaxy at Bank of California Stadium at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Major League Soccer presented by Audi and men, if you can if you don't have an air guitar, just use your cheerleading deal, Mr. Cheerleader Man. No, Dash, if you got hair like that, man, you gotta let it whip in the wind a little bit. A headbanger's ball. I like it. There should be some good soccer on tomorrow as yes. well. Can't wait for that. I used to have long hair like that back, back when. Get out of here, man. Good line. No, I, now, so, one of us in the booth did. One of us did not. No, I had the fro, you know, the, the soul glow. It would swing in the wind like oh, that. Oh, man, especially when I had to spray in the sheen in there as we take a look at today's timely delivery brought to you by DoorDash, Dusty. Well, and it's Sam Ellinger. Timely delivery here evades the pressure, no problem, locates his target. And it's really what Sam Ellinger has been so accustomed to. Battering Ram as he bruises his way in for one of his two rushing touchdowns. And when he gets outside the numbers, forget about it. He's going to call his own number as he barrels into the end zone. Three all-purpose touchdowns today. That's 24 mm. total touchdowns already this season for the quarterback in Texas, Sam Ellinger. Continuing to rewrite the school record book. 
Hands it off to Dazon Robinson. Robinson gets a couple of yards on the play. Thought it was interesting when Tom Herman said to us in our meetings with him that everybody senses how close we are. This could easily be a different scenario. Not 2-2, two and two, but 4-0 oh and and well on the way to something really huge. But it's good to see how the impact of what he did in preparation this game has paid off if you're a Texas fan. Tom Herman in his fourth year on the sidelines here in Austin. Out of Cal Lutheran. Running for a two-yard gain. Doyle making the tackle. Allison? Well, guys, Ellinger remaining out there on the field, but he's definitely being bothered by something with his left lower leg, either his ankle or calf. He's been keeping a heating pad on it when he's been on the sideline, using a massage gun as well on it. But everybody will tell you, he is so tough, he's so gritty, and he just gets tougher as the game goes on. Another example of that here today. Leading by example. Third down and six. Ellinger in the McCombs Business School. Big target down low here. In the middle of the field. That's Wiley. They come down the crease, tried to find him, and he got picked off. Baylor with the turnover, JT Woods. And he was JT Money on that pick. Inside the 25 to the 24, Aranda's team catching the break that they needed. Well, he had the guy he's looking for, Wiley. I think he just waited too long. Outstanding job by Milton to break off his receiver, seeing the route, get the pass breakup. And then it's JT Woods in the right place at the right time and putting this Baylor Bear football team back in position. But that whole thing set up by Mark Milton, who, is, who did an excellent job anticipating what was coming, breaking off of his receiver and creating that play to happen. All of a sudden, Baylor put it back in business, and Dave Aranda loves it. Yeah, he's amped. Hey, what about Woods making the catch off the carom, off the tip from his own teammate, Milton? Quick hands, great awareness, first and 10. Baylor from the Texas 25, low snap. Brewer gets it out quickly. Pass complete to Joshua Moore. And Moore brought down by Caden Stearns. Stearns has been one of the leading voices for change here on campus in Texas. Second down and two coming up. He was there for the tackle. Expect Baylor to waste not much time. Little play fake. Brewer again completes it to the tall, rangy receiver out of Miami's Booker T. Washington High School, Tyquan Thornton. The timing there from quarterback to receiver, just a quick speed out, but as Thornton's making his break, that ball's on him. He's able to make the grab and get out of bounds. First down and 10 from the 11. They can get a first down without scoring. Trip to the bottom of your screen. Brewer going to take off, looking for a block, gets one, and pushed out of bounds just around the five. It'll be second down and four to go. Not second and goal, but second and about four. Hey, Dusty, this would have been a two-score game had they gotten that two-point conversion. You mentioned that during the break. And that's why they went for it, trying to cut it to 16 points. Iquan Thornton out of bounds. So we're still in a three-score game, but a score here, all of a sudden, different feel, complexion of this game in the fourth. Trying to capitalize on the interception a moment ago. Brewer on the option, pitch. Boy, tough catch by Love. It never really got the handle until it was much too late. By then, three different tacklers had converged on him, led by Juwan Mitchell and B.J. Foster. Anthony Cook makes this play. A little bobble here on the pitch, and Anthony Cook, he keeps contained, forces Ebner back inside to the flow of his defense, and a quality tackle there by Juwan Mitchell. The tackling had been one of their biggest improvements at Chris Ash. He got empty. Moving Ebner around, trying to create a matchup. Ebner sets in the backfield beside Brewer. Thornton to the top of your screen. He looks back the other way. Over the middle, caught, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Holmes. Gavin Holmes brings it home. And Baylor drawing closer. 
They prove to be opportunistic after the interception. Mesh route concept, you'll see two shallow crossers and 86 Sims gets just enough of the defender to free up Holmes. And Charlie Brewer locates his target, puts it out in front, and he gets into the end zone. And all of a sudden, Baylor felt like they were completely out of this game at 27-3, climbing their way back in halfway through the fourth quarter. The extra point is good. And they make it an 11-point game with 7.37 to go. It all started with this interception. The carom, a propitious bounce into the arms of J.T. Woods. And then moments later, the catch and touchdown score by Holmes. And Baylor thinking about a comeback. We'll be back after this. Hey there, I'm Aisha, and my favorite thing about the Chick-fil-A Nuggets is how easy you can share them with your friends. They taste fresh, they're crispy, you can taste that every single one is unique. The top tier best chicken nuggets ever. You guys should put that in the commercial. Hi, my name is Brian, and a little thing I love about the Chick-fil-A mac and cheese is you can taste the different types of cheeses and the blends that they use, and everything just comes together. It's like a delicate dance. They're like perfection in every bite. ESPN College Football is presented by Tide. If it's got to be a clean you can trust, it's got to be Tide Hygienic Clean. And you can do your dance when your team has an 11-point lead, Texas with the lead, but touchdown passed by Brewer a moment ago. What was the key, Dusty? Well, let's take a look at it. It's going to be man-to-man -man coverage here in the red zone, okay? We're going to get a, a mesh route concept, crossers, okay? And they're going to knock each other off. As you're going to see Sims come across, it's going to open up number six, Galvin Holmes. Holmes' guy can't get over. Foster cuts off his man coverage, realizing what's coming. No one's able to stay with Gavin Holmes, and it's an easy pitch and catch for six. Anticipating man-to-man -man coverage, run the crossing route, run the mesh, and it's a touchdown for the Baylor Bears. Hey, Brewer has connected on 11 of his last 12 passes with a couple of touchdown passes included. 7.37 to go. This game suddenly got extremely interesting. It'll be first and 10 Texas from the 25. Let's go back to the studio and Matt. Coach Franklin's team has got a little work to do. Important drive here for the Texas Longhorns. They were on cruise control just a few minutes ago in the fourth quarter. All of a sudden, a crucial possession. First and 10, and Ellinger is going to hand it off to Ingram, his tailback. He picks up a yard, and Terrell Bernard. Boy, Bernard, we've said his name a lot today. He continues to stack up tackles. Having a big day for that Baylor defense. Well, he came downhill and he met the H back in the backfield, got off of that and got it on the play. Also well done by Jalen Petrie, setting the edge and forcing the ball carrier back inside. Second down and eight for Texas. Ellinger, downfield, open over the middle, complete to Wiley and that's going to be a first down reception well, for a guy that's banged up that was a great delivery by Ellinger excellent throw on the move hits his intended target Jared Wiley in stride Wiley took a shot there as he caught the football they spread it around well on offense 11 different players had caught touchdowns for Texas coming into the game this afternoon under six and a half minutes to play. Slowing it down, clock under five seconds, smart football by Sam Ellinger. Yeah, they can afford to be very methodical and deliberate here. Ingram broke a couple of tackles, and a nice gain sets him about two yards shy of the first down. McVeigh making the tackle for Baylor. Good push off the right side of that Texas offensive line. Christian Jones, the right tackle. Denzel Okafor, both doing solid labor. 
moving the Baylor front and allowing Keontae Ingram a nice pickup on first down. What a great graphic that was. 40 runs to 22 passes for this Texas offense. Herman said they wanted to run the football here. And they've established that today. Second down and two. The play clock below five again. Burning time, which is their ally right now. Ingram brought down at the line of scrimmage by who else but Bernard. That's 18 tackles, Dusty, for him. That's a day. He needs the cryotherapy after this one. I mean, the guy, <laughs> he's a heck of a football player. I mean, he's smart. He understands blocking schemes. He anticipates what's coming before the snap even gets there. Having a heck of a season and, man, playing a really nice ball game here this afternoon. Yeah, defensive coordinator Ron Roberts called him a classic overachiever. Under five minutes to go, third down and two for the Longhorns. Ellinger on the reverse to Joshua Moore. Tried to tell the defender to talk to the hand, but Mark Milton wasn't having it. You can miss me with that. That's what he said. And we got a late flag on the play. Horse collar, maybe. Anytime you see a defender in chase. No? Baylor signaling. Yes, Baylor signaling the other way. The face mask on Joshua Moore, maybe. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Offense number 68. The down counts. It'll be a 15 yard penalty. Bring up fourth down. That's against Derek Kerstetter, the center. Oh, Kurt, oh, yeah, up top. Oh, yeah. Apologies, I never even saw that. Yeah, he, neither Definitely did I. He right took call. out two. That was an unbelievable individual play by Mark Milton from the backside to chase down Joshua Moore like that and make the play up top, as you see. Kerstetter clearly he goes down on top of somebody on the Baylor sidelines. Yeah, he got a player and a coach. The old two for one makes it a fourth down and 18. Texas going to have to punt. Hey, Baylor folks, going to get the football back with 420 to go. Wonder if they come after it. They don't. They set up a return instead. And one of the nation's most dangerous returners on the J.O.B., but nowhere to go for Ebner. He has swarmed back around the nine yard line. With 4.01 to play, Brewer back at the helm of the offense. Baylor hoping for a miracle and trying to make it happen. With the Capital One Venture Card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. Objection! Overruled! And right now, earn 100,000 bonus miles when you spend $20,000 in your first year. I'll allow it. What's in your wallet? Tomorrow morning on Sunday NFL Countdown, Derek Henry trying to stiff arm the entire Pittsburgh Steel Curtain defense. Plus, Sam and the guys celebrating National Tight Ends Day with some help from George Kittle, Randy Moss, Looking at who got Moss kickoff week seven with Sunday NFL countdown 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. There's a look through the eyes and into the mask of Charlie Brewer. Four minutes to go. Trying to engineer a comeback here. Pass complete. Ebner with a first down run. About 14 yards on the game. Nice perimeter blocking. Again, they all day from the onset of this football game trying to get Tristan Ebner the football on the perimeter. Nice pickup for another first down. From the 22, Brewer flushed out. Into the sun, his receiver catches it, Holmes. Second down coming up. Making something out of nothing there for Charlie Brewer. A lot of pressure, as you alluded to, coming down on him. Ojimo, he's been a force getting pressure, just hasn't been able to get home as many times. Well done there by Charlie Brewer getting outside the pocket and finding a target on the far sidelines. Subbing players into the game. They've got to be very judicious with their time right now, Dusty. they got to go fast. Warp speed. Brewer out of the backfield. 
Finds his receiver, that's Lovett, who stopped up about two yards short of the first down with under three minutes to go. Baylor has all three of its timeouts. Got to have a sense of urgency right now. Get the play, get lined up, and you got to go. Clock's down under three minutes. As you mentioned, the last snap, taking way too much time. They got to hurry. Third down and two. Brewer gets it out. Threw it behind Thornton, his intended receiver, and they got to go for it here on fourth down. Remember, this is a team that has missed 10 consecutive days That's because right. of COVID shutdowns. That's exactly right. I mean, right. you don't get these reps, right? Lack of practice. I mean, again, they were still getting guys back throughout the course of the week. Even guys playing here today have had as few as one practice leading up to this. I try to make excuses for Baylor. They should still be able to get up and execute a hurry-up offense, but from a preparation standpoint, you can't do hurry-up offense on a Zoom call. No, you cannot. <laughs> Big fourth down. Fourth and two. Timeout. Texas. Their first okay, Texas is going to burn one of their timeouts. We're going to take one right along with them with 2.24 to go. An intriguing finish coming up. Stick around. Who's playing? Does it matter? Nope. 10 starting in earnest this weekend. Big outlook. 8 plus 1 game schedule. The championship game December 19th. Top seed in each division will play for that. The other teams will play a ninth cross division game on the weekend of the league title game. Everybody's playing football just the way we want it. Fourth down coming up for the Bears. Don't forget tonight, Michigan against Minnesota. 7.30 Eastern time on ABC. Left tackle. Oh, through. boy. Man. Wow. True freshman out there, Gavin Byers. Ball start. Offense number 58. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. That one really hurts. A tough spot after a timeout. True freshman. Filling into this makeshift offensive line. Yeah, Coach Herman liked it, even though his counterpart and collegiate teammate Dave Aranda didn't. Somebody from Cal Lutheran's going home happy after this one. Fourth down and seven now for the Bears. Brewer incomplete, and Texas will take over on downs. He tried to find R.J. Sneed, and it was broken up nicely on the play in the secondary. It's outstanding coverage by Chris Brown as he's flexing on the Baylor Bears. Right there with R.J. Sneed. Mm. Excellent job with the right hand coming across, getting the pass breakup. It's outstanding coverage and a huge play. R.J. Sneed, as we've talked about from the onset of this game, that's the reliable trusty wide receiver that in big moments they typically go to. Chris Brown anticipated in perfect position, and Tom Herman says, yes, I like it. A little over two minutes away from getting off of that two-game losing streak. Sneed, a little disconsolate look on the sidelines. First down and 10. That was Robinson. College football is watched, Nachos Party Packs bring the fun. Wherever the students are, the Live My Student section lives. Learn more at livemystudentsection.com. Give me a little Taco Bell Crunch Wrap Supreme. Okay. And a soda to go, Dusty. I see you. Watch that football game tonight, Minnesota, Michigan. I'm in with that. Hey, what do you think about what transpired here this afternoon as we come to a close with the way that Texas has kind of righted the ship a little bit as Ellinger limps back onto the field. I'm sure Tom Harmon saw a lot of the things he wanted to see addressed, primarily at the line of scrimmage. Their ability to run the football, stop the run. It's been on display 
throughout the course of the game. I think just the overall mindset philosophy of being more dedicated to the run. They'll run it again, Robinson. Robinson started the game in place of Keontae Ingram. Has done a nice job holding onto the football, advancing it down the field. Robinson averaging almost five yards per carry. And we got an injured Baylor player down on the field. Hey, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus is a must-have for Big 12 fans. Every Monday you'll get Dave Aranda's press conference. Plus, there's four upcoming Longhorn women's volleyball and soccer matches. And each Thursday, go all access with the Cowboys with our time, Oklahoma State football, where you get unprecedented footage and sounds from players and coaches. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. Bevo just taking it all in. You know how Bevo got his name, right? You know the story? I hope you out. Right? 13 nothing. Someone tried to write 13 nothing, and then I, I, the, the middle part of the story is not clear to me, but somehow they made it into a Bevo. If you write out 13 nothing, I think it was a rival fan tried to write it up somewhere or brand it on Bevo. And if you look at 13 nothing, you can make Bevo out of it. Okay, you learn something new every day, Jones. And it was in a press release like back in 1992 for me, and I read it. Charlie Brewer there looking on, not the way he had hoped today went. Yeah. See if they can get one more stop here on third down. They're going to keep it on the grind, ground for Robinson. Yeah, Brewer, a guy that is from Austin, grew up wearing a, speaking of back in the day, a, a Vince Young jersey. Thought about coming to Texas and... Had his father, had his grandfather, had one of his uncles play at Texas. Only received one uh, Power 5 offer and then decommitted and came to Baylor. Didn't work out his way, and it looks like Ellinger is going to finally have a, a good memory against Baylor. And a head-to-head -head win over yeah. Charlie Brewer. And you start with Baylor here, you know, I can't even imagine what they've gone through. Right. You know, shutting down the facilities for 10 days, literally having guys show up days before this football game and try to be prepared. I don't want to make excuses for them. They weren't making excuses right. to us yesterday, but from a preparation standpoint, clearly you're going to be behind the eight ball. So we'll see once they can yeah. catch their stride, get a full week of prep in, where they go from here. And for Texas, this is exactly what they needed to see. Again, defensively, Chris Ash has to be happy with the way his defense has performed. And offensively, just philosophically, being more dedicated to the run. This is who they want to be moving forward in a huge game looming next week in Stillwater, Oklahoma, to get them right back in this Big 12 race. Yeah, we saw Sam Ellinger get back to being more of who he is and who he has been here this afternoon. Fourth down and three for Texas. They throw it complete. And I tell you what, Kate Brewer in a monumental act of sportsmanship, Dusty. Looked like he elected not to run it in and run up the score. Is it sportsmanship or that's going to end the game? You know what I'm saying? Because I think that's just a smart football play. Yeah, Baylor has no timeouts left. Now you can knee it out and guarantee yourself a win. I, I recognize okay. that if you score. That's a 50-50 call, right? I, I no? mean, hey, I, again, I, I would have to think that's his mindset. Okay. Being a headsy football player, I just thought, what a call there by Tom Herman. A lot of yeah. people would just elect to kick that field goal, go up two touchdowns. He says, no, if we can get a first down, we can end the game now. And my expectation is that's what was said over on the sideline when they called the play. Great point. He was probably told by his coaching staff, once you get that first down, get down, don't be selfish which, because this game will be over. Which totally goes against human nature, right? I mean, let's uh, be honest. In the moment, if you're a football player at this level and you're in the moment, you catch the ball, you see end zone, I it mean, takes a lot to mentally throttle down. That depends. I hear what you're saying, but it's a team game. And if you're in it for the team and you know that going down guarantees a win, kind of an easy decision. I know you would be one that want to pad your stats in a moment like this. You'd be looking to dance in the end zone. But I think that's a smart play. Uh, nice call there by Mike Yursich out of the timeout. And then a smart headsy play there by the veteran Kate Brewer to go down. You're right. I nailed you, didn't You're right I? on all fronts. I nailed it. Coach got to let him spin a little bit. 
But they did enough for the win. More than enough. They win it 27 to 16. As the Texas Longhorns snap that odious, lamentable two-game losing streak with a couple of close calls along the way. Dave Aranda's team active for the first time in a little over three weeks. Getting some late momentum, but not nearly enough. Losing to his counterpart from Cal Lutheran, his former college football teammate. Ellinger and crew win it 27-16. For Allison Williams and Dusty Dvorak, I'm Mark Jones, and for a talented crew behind the cameras in the truck you never get a chance to see, it's been a nice afternoon saying so long from Austin, Texas. Right now we send it back to Matt Berry. Matt.